Hello, once again, we're looking at the first and the second derivative and the information that we can get out of that um, about the function. Still on the first derivative. In the last video, we looked at an example of using the first derivative test. Uh, we're going to try it again, but with a uh, more difficult function. The derivatives are more difficult and the algebra might be more difficult. In the end, though, we'll still be able to use the tools of the first derivative test. And then we'll introduce the second derivative later in this video. Our function is x squared minus 1. The entire function is cubed. We want to use the first derivative test to find and classify the critical points, critical numbers. Um, or actually, let's just answer this question. Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? And find all the local maximum and local minimum values. All right. Let's take the derivative first. We have to do a power chain rule. We bring down the 3, we take the x squared minus 1 squared, and then we multiply by the derivative of x squared minus 1, 2x. It's our job to figure out where that's equal to 0. We set it equal to 0. But we can factor out, or we can put together, sorry, the 3 and the 2x, put that out front, and then setting this equal to 0, we have x squared minus 1 and another um, x squared minus 1. So what happens there is we end up with x squared plus 1 quantity squared and x squared minus 1 quantity squared. It ends up factoring like this. Um, x minus 1 quantity squared and x plus 1 quantity squared. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what this is equal to 0 at. And so if x is equal to 1, for sure, it's equal to 0. If x is equal to negative 1, it's equal to 0. Got to be careful now. On the outside, we have a 6x. So if x is equal to 0, then our derivative will be equal to 0. There's no place where our derivative is undefined at. It's nice and polynomial in nature. So we have three critical numbers, negative 1, 1, and 0. OK, with that algebra, now we go to a number line. Because the first derivative test is built off of analyzing the signs on the first derivative. So we're going to label these on an x-axis. We could pick some test values if you want to plug in. I want you to look at it though and be able to know that um, if you do that, pick something that's very large for the bigger than one, something very small for the negative one. But actually take a good look at this though. Sometimes you don't have to pick any value. Sometimes you can sort of just intuit your way through it. All right. And so um, look, x minus one is squared x plus 1 is squared. That's always going to be positive. Times 6, it's going to be positive. So what really determines the sign on this derivative is the x value. So when x is negative, your derivative will be negative. And when x is positive, your derivative will be positive. So let's go ahead and just label that with a bunch of signs. Well, this is information now. What are we looking for? The first derivative test is looking for places where you change sign on your first derivative. At negative 1, you don't change sign. You're decreasing, you hit 0, then you're decreasing again. At positive 1, you don't change sign. You're positive, you're increasing, and then you're positive on the other side after going through 0. So the only place where you change sign on your first derivative is at 0. So we can tell where it's decreasing and increasing at. we got to be careful, though, when we do that. We can't just say, oh, you know, negative infinity to zero. That's where it's decreasing at. Because then that would include negative one. Technically, you're not decreasing at negative one. You plateau there, and then you go back to being decreasing. You, you decrease, and you plateau, and then you decrease again. We had a picture of that earlier, but yeah. So so no, um, you gotta, you got to say negative infinity up to up to negative 1, then go from negative 1 up to 0. In between that, you put a union symbol. Same thing for increase. It's at this place, x equals 0, where you change from decreasing to increasing. That place is going to be a, uh, a place where you have a local minimum value. We can plug it back into the original function and find out that that value is equal to a negative 1. Local minimum value of negative 1 for this function. And that's it. No local maxes. That's it. All right. First derivative test. Analyze the signs on the first derivative. Okay.
I want to introduce you to the second derivative's connection to the function. And next video, we'll introduce the second derivative test. But we can get some information. Everything we've said so far has been about the first derivative and how increasing and decreasing information is gathered from the sign on the first derivative. Well, the shape of the graph is determined by the second derivative. Earlier, we talked about something. Some con well, now we're going to officially say what concavity is. Okay. It describes the shape of the function. Two options, concave up and concave down. A function that's concave up is like a cup. There's two sides to it. There's a decreasing side to it and an increasing side to it. In a concave up function, all your tangent lines will lie below the function. That, that corresponds to where your second derivative is positive at. In a concave down function, there's two sides to it. There's an increasing side and a decreasing side. A concave down, like a frown, occurs when your tangent lines are above your function. So concave up like a cup, concave down like a frown. Your second derivative determines which one you have. The sign on your second derivative tells you which one you have. Okay, great. So then what about when the second derivative equals to zero? and you change concavity. What's so special about that? Well, it gets a name. It's called the inflection point. It's a buzzword name now, especially with you know all that we've been through with the pandemic. We were looking for the inflection points on the curve, places where things are turning around. You're changing your shape. You're changing your concavity. You got this rapidly increasing function. You want to know, when is this thing going to stop increasing? Where's my inflection point at? So I can start then to know that it's going to start to die off, the rate at which is increasing is decreasing. That's what we need. And so they're called inflection points. Here's a graph with a bunch of letters labeling x values. And at those letters, we have, we have um, different shapes on our function on those intervals there. But on some of them, we have changing shape. Concave down like a frown between A and B. At B, it changes to concave up like a cup. At C, it changes back to concave down. Something very strange happens at D. At D, you're concave down like a frown on the one side, but then abruptly, you're concave up like a cup. That's a place where your derivative doesn't exist at. That's a cusp, but that's okay. And then finally, we have a, another place where your derivative doesn't exist at. But no change in concavity. You're kind of gave up like a cup. You're kind of gave up like a cup. No change in concavity there at E. And then finally at um, P, you're kind of gave up like a cup. Then you're kind of gave down like a frown. So where are your inflection points? Where did you change concavity? Technically, D is the place where you change concavity at. So B, C, D, and P are places where you change concavity at. Um, D is a place where your derivative doesn't exist at. But that's okay. You change concavity there. Officially then, it's an inflection point. All right, this video is getting a little long. I want to introduce the second derivative test. Um, you want to use it when the second derivative is easy to take. If it's too much drama to take the second derivative, then maybe you shouldn't be using it. <laughs> but it's very, it's very helpful. Um, and so we'll get to that next video. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what other videos you want to see. And hopefully this has been helpful to you. I'll see you in the next video.